Well, here we go, folks. I actually agree with AOC today. Uh, we'll get into that. Um, Charlie Kirk seems to agree with her as well to make it really crazy. And uh, they're trying to strip President Trump of his powers all in a bill uh, for coronavirus relief. We're going to get into all that today. Hi, I'm Neil Johnson, the host of Lumberjack Logic. This is episode 22 of Lumberjack Logic. Thank, th thank you so much for listening. Again, that's thank you so much for listening. And uh, a lot of you have uh, asked about uh, the Christmas tree fiasco because you saw that in an earlier show. So I'm going to show you a couple pictures. For those who don't know, this was our tree uh, that we had brought in. It fell over in the tree stand. Uh, I am been really big this year on ordering from uh, local businesses or going to small businesses and buying. And uh, I, I found this, uh, what I felt was the perfect tree stand. I could get it through the Ace Hardware in Grand Rapids, Minnesota, close by where I live. And so I ordered it up. Now, unfortunately, we haven't gotten it because not because of the store, but because FedEx has lost the package. I know it's been going a lot on a lot this year. I think they're really overwhelmed because of the amount of people ordering. Uh, but I want, I, I'm working so hard to just make sure I can give that money to local businesses. Uh, Jeff Bezos does not need our money, folks. Okay, stop ordering from Amazon. And if you're a conservative, especially stop ordering from Amazon. He's using that money to basically fund that garbage piece of trash Washington Post and use it against you and your values. Here, I've got a headline actually out of the Washington Post I'm going to share with you right here. And this will just give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Here we go. You ready? This is, this is from just the other day. The inside story of how Trump's denial, mismanagement, and magical thinking led to the pandemic's dark winter. Folks, this pandemic, uh, you know, which, this, it's a virus. Do you understand that? Viruses spread. Have you ever heard the saying, spreads like a virus? Okay, this isn't Trump. Okay, why are we making this a political thing? Okay, we could go back and look at Obama's handling of his uh, pandemics during those times. Okay, he wasn't so hot at this. And uh, because nobody is. Because to think that you're going to avoid uh, the consequences of it. I mean, whether it was cooked up in a lab or came from a bat in a market, I don't know. Um you know, I know China's not our friend right now. I, they, they just, and they haven't been. And that's one thing that Trump really exposed. But, um, you know, to think that you're going to be able to control a virus is, is kind of the height of arrogance of man. So anyways, but back to the tree. We ended up, uh, because it had fallen over and the other tree stand had broken, I need to get this tree stand. It's not coming in in time. So this was my solution. Yeah, so you see that bar clamp. Okay, so I've got that hooked onto the railing. I've got that tied onto the tree. Uh, but you don't really see it because you're looking at the tree from the other side of the room. And then I took 50 pound monofilament line my son uses for trying to uh, catch catfish in the, in the river. And anyways, that, uh, that is anchored at two spots. And it's holding it up really well. So it's, it's working great. Um, here's our tree standing tall, standing proud. And I really love Christmas. I love this time of year. I love you folks. Thanks for listening. Uh, you know, thanks for thanks for watching the show. But I really, I do really love Christmas. I love the decorations. I love the Christmas music. I love it all. Except for last Christmas. Terrible song. Terrible song. Worst Christmas song ever. That's a whole other thing. But let's get into this here. So uh, I said I'd agree. I agreed with uh, 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 AOC, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. Um, she, uh, she tweeted out, uh, this is why Congress needs time to actually read this package before voting on it. Members of Congress have not read this bill. It's over 5,000 pages, arrived at 2 p.m. today, and we are told to expect a vote on it in two hours. This isn't governance, it's hostage taking. Seriously, that's a great quote. Mark that one down. I, I, I don't ever agree with this gal. Okay. Um, Charlie Kirk said, and I thought this was really good, uh, the fact that billions in foreign aid was even discussed in a time like this, much less passed by Congress, tells you everything you need to know about how insanely broken and corrupt our, our government is. Think about this. I mean, we're, we're at a point where the corruption is so deep. And here's the thing. And this is why I'm so concerned and want to get Trump back in for another four years. This 
they're just back to business as normal. Did you see his little uh, statement, his little speech, like nine minutes? He basically pulled their pants down right in front of everybody. Okay, he let read out this stuff that's in the bill. I, it was absolutely one of the most beautiful speeches I've ever seen by a president. Here, I'll give you some idea on what they're giving to foreign countries. Egypt, $1.3 billion, okay, to, to bolster their, their uh, military, to buy tanks from Russia. Okay, are you with me? I mean, that's what they're gonna, they, they're, they're not gonna, they, we're giving money to Egypt to fund Russia. Sudan, 700 million. Ukraine, 453. Oh, I wonder, I wonder if that's something for the Biden side. Huh? They get, what are they getting 10% of that back? Israel, 500 million. Nepal, 130 million. Burma, 135 million. And so on. It just goes on. Pakistan, you know? Oh, <laughs> that was a great one too. The Pakistan one. Um, I think 10 million of it was for gender studies. Something like that. Yeah. 600 bucks for you. Hey, hey. Billions for foreign. Speaking of that, $600 for every American citizen. Do you know what else is in this bill? Money for families of illegal aliens. Yeah, not only that, it's more money than you can get in this, this go around. Do you know why? They're going to retroactively make sure that they can get part of that previous stimulus check. Okay, now here's the thing. Trump, Trump goes on, he gives a speech, he talks about what a garbage bill it is, says he wants more money for American families. Again, I'm diverging from Trump on this. I don't think that's the answer. The answer is productivity, production, getting American workers back to work. Okay, we can't print money out of thin air forever and not expect it to backfire. In fact, this is actually the design of global elitists who want the Great Reset to occur. Okay, that's what this is about. It's about bankrupting us. Oh, here's another one that was in there. The, the green energy uh, rebates. Okay, that is not, uh, that, well, that's through uh, tax credits and whatnot and extending those. That's basically subsidizing a specific industry. Again, the government picking winners and losers. Look, I live off the grid, okay? I use solar panels. Not, not, it's because it makes sense for me. It would have cost me more to bring in power than to put up a system. So guess what? They can get my business that way. And it makes sense. You understand? But to think that we need to fund it, that's just, that's over the top. I mean, uh, that's not what government is to do. That's not their place. It's not their job. Okay. Oh, how about this? <laughs> You'll love this one. 115715000 for wild horse and burrow program kid you not okay um not only that um here you want an ultimate here let's give the rich a tax break you want to talk about that kind of stuff how about tax deductions for owners of racehorses you own a racehorse probably not right uh some people do usually those people have a fair amount of money racehorses aren't cheap training them isn't cheap all that stuff okay and yet now they need special tax breaks more come on Come on, man. Talk like Joe Biden. Come on, man. Anyways, well, it's just, okay. Here, here's another one. You're going to love this. Also in there, Amendment 833, Escobar, uh, to HR 6395. I believe Escobar is who wanted this in. Uh, I don't know much about that congressperson. But to require certifications be made to Congress when the president deploys active duty military within the United States during civil unrest by amending the Insurrection Act in Title 10, Chapter 13 of the U.S. Code. Hmm, think they're nervous about something there? Yeah, okay. Um, uh, Trump needs to just not sign this. Uh, this is junk. And they are playing some political gamesmanship now because here I am, this is midnight, and they're just coming out with headlines that guess what? Uh, the Democrats have said, yeah, don't worry, we'll stuff that $2,000 per family. What about the rest of this? Because until the rest of this is out of there, just say no. I think they're so concerned now that if there's a public debate on what's actually in this bill, this piece of garbage legislation, which might be the most garbage, junky piece of legislation, except outside of Obamacare and the previous bill, which had all this money. Do you know, do you know how much money is in there for the Kennedy Center? You have the one that laid off the workers that took all that money before? A billion dollars. One billion dollars. 
Do you know that if you started working in 1776 for $11,000 a day, now that's pretty good money, right? If you're collecting $11,000 a day, every day since 1776, I think, is how that number works out. You don't reach a billion dollars yet today. You have no idea how much a billion dollars is. It's so much. And, and we're talking close to a trillion dollars. In fact, I've seen other estimates of 1.4 trillion. So I don't know, is this like a, a, a an athlete's contract? Well, it's 900 billion, but with special performance by giving extra money to some people, we can get this up to 1.4 trillion. Is that what that means? Oh my gosh. You know, we got $23 trillion of national debt. Do you realize that? Okay, and so to think that every American needs a bunch of money right now, we need to tighten our belts or we're gonna just settle our grandkids and our, our kids and grandkids with so much debt they can't get out of it. You can only print money for so long. Eventually you have to pay the piper. I know we've been living this way for a long time, but I'm telling you, it, there's, there's never been a case where that hasn't happened. Do you remember back when they were burning the German money? Uh, yeah, go back, look that up. Look some pictures of that up. Wheelbarrows of money and they're burning it in the fireplace because it's worth more as fuel than it is as money. People, this really sucks. This really sucks. You know what this is? It's lobbyists. Lobbyists, lobbyists, lobbyists. I mean, we got to kick these people to the curb. We got to get some term limits. People, we got to take the country back. I, I'm telling you, I am so uh, concerned about this and I'm so concerned about the election and that's why I continue... Uh, that's what kind of got me starting this whole thing, uh, but I am concerned about the real irregularities, okay, in this in this uh, election. And um, if if we don't solve this now, we're on like this precipice. If we go over this, I don't I don't know that we ever get back, people. That's my biggest concern. And maybe we could, I you know I, but it, it's pretty bad. What about all the expanding of the XM Bank? Oh, get this. Here's another one they put in there: tobacco purchasing. Raise that age up to 21. You know, maybe, maybe that's important to do. I, you know, that can be debated. <coughs> Excuse me, but it's certainly not something for this bill. Oh, here's another one. Did you know that it funds government research, research on gun control through the CDC? Yeah, it's, it, they, they call it gun violence, but really what it's leading towards is gun control. That's all this stuff, if you haven't seen Trump's speech on this bill, watch that. He gives some other ones. Uh, you know, some of them are different than what I've brought up here. Uh, some are the same, but you know, this is, <clears throat> here, I thought, I saw this today. I thought this was so classic. $900 billion divided by 327 million. That's our US population, 900 billion, the amount in the bill. You know what that is? $2,752 and some odd cents. But according to Congress's math, that's $600. Yeah, the total, if you took that um, $600 and multiplied that out over the population, you're at about $198 billion. And they've got over $700 billion more dollars in there to give away and fund special interests. And you know how much money is in there for restaurants, bar owners, people that actually were terribly impacted by this coronavirus. And, and the response, I won't call it the pandemic, I'm gonna call it the response to the pandemic. Zero, zero dollars, people. Okay, I here's the thing. I mean, I could go on about this, I could give you so much more, okay? But uh, that's not what you need. Um, you know, I mean, whatever, what is there $700 million for Stan? I, I mean, just it just doesn't stop. But people, we need to take action. Yeah, you, we have got to call these people. I don't care if you think they agree with you or not. Turn up the heat. Tell them to just provide a payment uh, it, for, for families that need the assistance and for industries that were the hardest hit. And that's it. Get everything else out of there, okay? Um, and, and then let's do that, and then let's get people back to work. Make that call, send that email, write that letter, 
Okay, well right now we're down to calls and emails because this thing's being debated. You know, they, they're trying to cave to Trump on the 2000 and then just blow the thing up even bigger. And then, oh yeah, we've got the votes to do that in the House and so on. But that's just gamesmanship. No, we want the other stuff cut out of here, okay? That's what's important. We cannot continue to just print money. If you haven't seen the DuckTales, I remember I used to watch that as a kid, uh, but... Um, you know, actually I was a teenager, but I just love that show. Anyways, but Scrooge McDuck always swimming through his money and everything. But he, the boys made a, uh, a, a money printing device and they were just printing out all this money. And he explained to them the flaws of that. I'm sure you could find that clip on YouTube if you wanted to look that up. But this is, uh, hey, cool, I got another new subscriber. Young Kim has subscribed. Right there, just came across. Oh, thanks so much. We broke through 200 subscriber barrier. Uh, I, I put out a little Facebook post. A uh, really good friend. Uh, he wanted to be the 200th. He must have been watching it when it hit 199. He he then subscribed and sent me the screenshots from those. And uh, then it, it's just uh, it it went past there. I think we're up to like 212 or something like that. I don't know. It's just great. Thank you. Thank you. I uh, I really mean that. So. We're, we're, uh, this is, this is rough. This is rough stuff. We, we've got to do everything we can. January 6th, January 6th, people. I think I'm going to go. I've been talking to some friends, uh, creating a carpool. You know, I'm out here in Minnesota. Uh, I've seen other people trying to organize caravans and that type of thing. Let's go. Let's all go. Um, we have got to make our voices heard. We've got to make our voices heard. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Lumberjack Logic. Again, I'm your host, Neil Johnson, and I really, again, want to encourage you, make some phone calls. Even if you think your senators or Congress people will not agree with you, call them anyways. Log those calls. They know that every call you make represents a certain number of people. And I can't remember what those numbers were, but I think like every call means that 10 people think that way. Every letter uh, is was even more because of the snail mail. I don't know what the email number is. Uh, you know, those numbers are a little old. So, you know, bottom line is though, they're looking at that and every single one means that there's a lot more people thinking that way because only a certain amount of, amount of the population takes action. We need over a million people uh, out there in DC on the 6th of January. Uh, you get your friends to go, uh, family, whatever. It's it's going to be different. I mean, that, you know, the mayor's out there trying to close everything down, so you got to watch that. You're going to have to have your own food and and whatnot. But uh, you know, plan ahead and uh, and just it's important. It's important. We're really at a critical point in this country, folks. Um, yeah. But again, thanks for watching. I'm Neil Johnson, host of Lumberjack Logic. I'll see you next time.